Hey everybody, this is Candice Adewale of The Loving You Lifestyle, and I am back with yet another video. How are you ladies doing? I hope everyone is doing well. I'm ready to jump right into our topic, which is the level up is not for free. I decided to address this topic, and when I say this, I want everyone who's listening to know that I am not picking on anyone in particular, but I decided to do this video because over my years of being a feminine arts educator and helping women on their journey to become more consciously feminine, I have come across certain groups of and individuals who feel like women, other women who teach particular subjects in this genre should not be charging money for their knowledge and expertise. And it's quite bothersome to me because when you say that, what you're saying is that you don't really value the information being given to you. And also you don't know how much money it costs for the person that is knowledgeable to gain access to the knowledge that they have or their journey or what they went through to, to know what they know to be able to help you. So I want to talk a little bit about the level up and the cost that must be paid in order to truly level up. So if you're still listening at this point, good for you. <laughs> You know, free game is nice, but the honest truth is, is if you truly want to transform your life, you're going to have to invest both time and money. And I've gotten to the point where I truly resent the women who want the most while investing the least in themselves. Those women to me are leeches and energy vampires who are wanting a lifetime supply of free knowledge and know-how without the willingness to open up their wallets. And for me, that alone exposes the lack of readiness for the next level. For the women who are serious about changing their lives, for the women who want to actually take on the task of not just acting feminine, to get a man to open their pockets, but to be the embodiment of feminine energy and show up consciously feminine every single day, the level up is going to comprise of six key areas that you're going to have to invest in. And those six key areas are emotional, spiritual, physical, mental, financial, and social. And if you want to grab a pen, and some paper to jot some of the things that I'm going to be talking about down, go right ahead. So when you are talking about leveling up and you're specifically talking about these six key areas, I'm suggesting that you break down your vision for your life into smaller daily, weekly, monthly goals under each of these six key areas. The first area that I want to really talk about and expand upon or expound upon is your emotional level up. Your emotional level up is about your ability to achieve emotional wellness. It is about getting tuned into your emotions, allowing yourself to deeply feel your emotions and knowing how, when, and where to display your emotions. This is the whole point. And I feel as though it is the opposite of emotional unavailability. Emotional mastery is essential as a consciously feminine woman because you will need to understand how to use your emotions to navigate your life and to get the things that you desire. You will need to know you will need to know when to use your emotions and how your emotions serve as a portal for you to tap into your dark and light feminine energy. 
which is something we really don't talk about a lot in the feminine world. We hear a lot about light feminine energy and that's, you know, being positive and smiling and being pretty, but we don't talk about the dark side of femininity that much. And um, when you start to explore the various feminine archetypes, then you understand, you'll start to begin to understand uh, the importance of your emotions and 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 how to display them. Uh, this also includes the art of manifesting because emotional control is necessary for creation. High emotional intelligence means you know how to communicate your emotions in a high value way. Are you one of those women that are easily triggered? Um, if you just spend a few minutes in almost any Facebook group, you can see how many women lack the emotional intelligence to communicate their feelings in a high value and feminine manner when they feel angry or disagree with each other. And it's quite entertaining to sit back and watch. Sometimes it's actually sad because a lot of these women actually think that they're feminine. And when you have not mastered your emotions, when you have no emotional mastery, when you do not know how to communicate effectively your emotions, you're missing a big chunk of what it means to be a feminine woman. Are you learning to sit still and listen to your heart? Because that's the first thing that you need to do is just get in tune with your heart space. What is your heart saying? Are you stuffing emotions? Do you need to learn how to control your emotions at certain times? My suggestion is to give yourself, learn to give yourself what you need or ask for help. Your investment in this area may be to invest in yin yoga classes or seek the help of a feminine arts coach who specializes in emotional alignment. One of the reasons why I bring up yin yoga is something that I started practicing earlier this year that has really taken my femininity to the next level because yin yoga focuses solely on feminine, energetically feminine yoga postures that tap into your sacral chakras and your heart chakras and helps you to really hone in on all of that energy. So Yin yoga has forced me or to focus on those two parts of my body, the, the energy in those two parts of my body, and also help me to experience deep levels of surrender, which is absolutely beautiful. So I highly recommend you looking for yin yoga classes in your area, and that might be a part of what you need in order to get that balance, that emotional balance that you need. And again, seek feminine arts coaches who specialize in emotional intelligence and womb space and heart space energy. So the next part of your level up is spiritual. Your spiritual level up is about being in alignment with spirit. This may look like practicing a traditional religion like Christianity or Islam or spending time in nature, meditation, journaling, listening to hymns, gospel music, or Tibetan sound bowl music. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. Feminine women are spiritual women. And deeply connected to the the divine. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about being a woman is understanding that you are a spiritual portal that um, connects everyone to something bigger than themselves. Has your spirit been broken? You know, that's something that you really need to explore. I know that there was a time in my life where my spirit had been broken and my spiritual floor just shattered. I had no foundation and I had to figure out how to get it back. And living a consciously feminine lifestyle helped me to achieve that. You're going to have to give gratitude. This is a big component of this, of this um, holding in all of the spiritual energy 
as a woman, I recommend getting a journal specifically for gratitude journaling and try to jot down five to 10 things daily that you are grateful for and just really deeply reflect and take a moment to just really feel that before you move on about your day. Prayer, however prayer looks for you, I recommend you doing it. And one thing I have learned is that prayer is a vibration. It's not so much about the particular body postures or the words, but it's about the energy. You may need to purchase books or video or audio programs to enhance your spiritual level up. You may also need to um, call on spiritual guidance from spiritual counselors or spiritual leaders in your community. I know for me, I have had a couple of spiritual cleansings done because I felt like there were spiritual blocks in my path that I needed to have removed. And so I sought out spiritual uh, leaders to do cleanses for me, including a Baba Lao um, from the Yoruba tradition. And it was extremely helpful. I felt like when I had that done, that my path was clear and I was able to move on to things that are bigger, better, and brighter in my life. So the next component is physical. Your physical level up is about your ability to achieve and maintain your physical strength and stamina and stay as healthy as you possibly can. It is also about your ability to look your absolute best at any age. As I believe Shira Seven says, there is no such thing as an ugly woman, only a lazy one. And I could not agree with her more. Are you exercising daily? Perhaps you need to invest in a gym membership, um, hire a personal trainer, or even purchase home workout equipment. I mean, they have... There's absolutely no reason why you should not be adding movement daily to your, you know, to your everyday routine because there's so many different ways to do this. And we all know by now that the way you look is a humongous part of your level up, but it's not the only part. Are you eating well? And by that, I mean, are you eating like you love yourself? Fruits, veggies, supplements. High quality meats, unprocessed vegan and vegetarian food. There is such a myth that just because you are vegan or vegetarian that you are automatically healthy. And that is so far from the truth. If you're eating a bunch of processed vegan and vegetarian foods, you're not going to be healthy. So making sure that whatever you put in your mouth is high quality because it is a manifestation of your self-love. Maybe you need to invest in classes to learn how to grow your own food or hire a nutritionist. I know for me, a big part of my level up in this particular component was taking a home herbalism class, which I will leave a link to in the description box. But I took the home herbalism class because I want to be the medicine woman in my family. I want to understand how to treat different illnesses and ailments with medicinal herbs. And so I am so grateful that I educated myself in that way. But of course it costs money to do that, but it's so well worth it because we don't spend as much time at the doctor, doctor's office. And as some of you all know, I have sarcoidosis. And so I've been able to treat my sarcoidosis and manage my sarcoidosis holistically. So are you at your goal weight or working towards it. Um, It's not just about looking good, but also getting in the practice and habit of being healthy so that you're not diabetic, so that you can avoid a lot of illnesses. This is something that's not really spoken about when we talk about physical, the physical component of our level up, but have you booked your woman's wellness appointment? I mean, if you're looking good on the outside, but you haven't you know, gone to the doctor, then what's really the point? You know, go ahead and book your women's wellness appointment. Have you had your annual or um, biannual pap smear? 
Are you doing your monthly breast examinations? You know, you need to make sure to do your monthly breast, self-breast examinations. Do you have your mammogram appointment scheduled? Are you going to the dentist every six months or at least once a year for a good cleaning? These are all important components because a lot of women start to neglect their dental care the older they get. And you can't. You absolutely can't. And actually, decaying teeth can cause other problems in your body. Um, Perhaps you're wanting to get teeth whitening or veneers. I know I'm planning a trip. I want to plan a trip to Colombia to get my teeth done. And I will let you ladies know. So if anybody wants to come with me, we can plan a group trip and go get our teeth done. Just let me know. <laughs> um, perhaps investing in waist trainers or corset training. Um, also, physical appearance. You're going to have to invest in building up your wardrobe. Perhaps hire a professional stylist. I know for me, I wanted to put together a more cohesive look for myself. So I actually hired on a professional stylist to help me put together a a nice wardrobe that's built around my feminine archetype. Hair, makeup, manicures, skin skin care specialists. I mean, if you want to try dermablading or, um, or laser treatments, chemical peels, These are all ways that you can, all the ways, different ways that you can invest in your physical level up. And I think the deeper you dive, you will start to move beyond the basics of what many are calling the level up. The next component, mental. Your mental level up is about achieving balance and wellness of your mind. Your ability to stay stress, dust, and drama free. And that is the creed that I live by. My life is all about staying stress, dust, and drama free. How good are you at managing and minimizing the stress in your life? Is your self-esteem high? I meet a lot of women who are, you know, on this journey. And I'm glad to see that they're on this journey However, their self-esteem is still not where it needs to be. And um, they think that they can cover it up with some great wigs or lashes or makeup. And it really starts on the inside. How does your self-talk or what does your self-talk sound like in your head? Are you negative or complain a lot? Because honestly... Nobody wants to hang around a woman or a man, but we're talking about women, um, who complains a lot and is always negative. Are you running old tapes in your mind with negative messaging? Do you already have positive and effective techniques to deal with moments of depression? Do you know the natural herbs that you can take? to help your mental wellness. I'm actually going to be doing a separate video in regards to my favorite um, all natural mental health supplements, because I really feel that too many women just suffer mentally alone and without any assistance. They, they don't go see mental health professionals. They, um, they don't want to take any medication, which I can understand because of the side effects. But they they just feel like they have to suffer long. And that's not the truth. Also, while we're on the topic, go to therapy. I am a huge advocate of going to mental health professionals. And I myself have gone to mental health professionals many times in my life. And I am so happy that I have. And I have absolutely no shame in saying that. Like One of the best things I ever did for my journey was to lay on somebody's sofa. And it's something about knowing that a person is legally um, required to keep everything you say confidential. So I guess like relieving or such a relief and you just feel like you can just let it all out. So definitely don't neglect that because what I have seen is 
women starting out on their journey. They are so ready to level up. They want a high earning man. They want a good, high quality man. And really, they are suffering and they need to start with going to a mental health professional first. They are suffering from sexual abuse that they have not dealt with. They are dealing with the residual negative effects of of living with a narcissistic parent or being physically abused by an ex-spouse or abortions or the death of a loved one. They're dealing with so many different things. And then they're trying to level up. And the one thing that I have learned is this, is that if you do not, if you do not deal with some of the really big issues that are pressing in your life before you get married, I guarantee you they will make manifest in your marriage. They will. And I'm not saying that you have to be perfect to get married, that you have to be 100% healed, quote unquote, to get married, because healing is a journey. I don't think you'll ever be 100% healed, but you should be on your way. And you, if you're wanting, you know, an emotionally healthy, high quality man, well, you need to at least show up that way also and not have all this uh, baggage to unload of sexual abuse and, you know, like heavy stuff in your marriage, because it can cause some serious, serious roadblocks in your marriage. So, you know, be honest with yourself and where you are in your journey. And perhaps the first thing that you need to do is invest in some good therapy and with some high quality therapists. And I'll leave a link also to um, two therapists that I highly recommend that I know personally. And I, you know, I just, when I think of the number of women that I've met that neglect this part, it really hurts my heart because maybe instead of buying that, you know, $500, $600 wig, that needs to be better invested, like I said, in some therapy sessions. So you have to evaluate your own life, but do not neglect that if you need that. And perhaps what you really need is to hire a life coach. I think life coaching is very, very helpful because um, life coaching is not therapy, but what it is, is somebody there to help assist you in figuring out what exactly it is that you want and how you're going to achieve it and to hold you accountable to the goals that you set for your life. So you can look for reputable life coaches as well. Again, I mentioned journaling already. And my biggest point of this entire comp- component is this, is don't run from the things going on in your mind. Some of you all are holding on, holding yourselves back because of deep hurts, abuse, and wounds, and it's time to set yourself free. Okay, so the next part of your level up is financial. Your financial level up is not only about securing a bag, and I know everybody is talking about securing a bag these days, but it's also about understanding that money is an energy. It is also about achieving balance and being financially savvy and financially responsible. Financial wellness is also about planning for the future and not just your future, but several generations out if possible. And even if you don't have children or don't want to have children, you still should be planning several generations out because maybe that's going to include stepchildren. Maybe that's going to include nieces or nephews or grandchildren. Whatever it is, just make sure that you are thinking beyond yourself. It may even include charities that have to do with children or scholarships to help um, children from your community, but you need to be generationally minded or be one that is 
legacy minded. Do you know what your credit score is? Can you tell me right now? <laughs> if not, you need to definitely know that. Are you making, are your money making passions or the things that you feel passionately about that make you money? Are they in alignment with living a feminine lifestyle? Um, are they in alignment with being purposed to be a wife and a mother? If not, are you creating a plan to get to that place of alignment? Are you spending time and money educating yourself on the components of building wealth? Are you healing any negative emotions and attitudes you may have towards money? And this right here was a big one for me because I grew up what I like to call American poor. My mom was on public assistance after she got divorced from my dad. Things were always tight financially in the house. And I heard the words, we can't afford that a lot. And what that created in me was an anxiety towards money. So when I had money, I would like to just spend it as quickly as possible because in my mind, there may not be enough money in the future for me to get what I want. And I got so tired of denying myself things that I wanted from not being able to afford it. So when I got the opportunity to earn my own money, I would quickly spend it away. And I had to learn how to heal that part of me, um, that emptiness. And I actually went to therapy with that. And it's something that I still work on and with professionals because there are certain moments in my life where I still feel that trigger. So you have to know this about yourself if you have any negative emotions or negative messaging about money. I also had negative um, negative emotions about money. That when I started making a lot of money, I felt guilty because I felt like, well, maybe I'm not keeping it real anymore or people are going to think I'm stuck up and better than them because I'm doing well financially. And I had to let all of those things go uh, because I would uh, entertain dusties. I would, again, beat myself up and feel guilty. I would give away money freely to people who didn't deserve it because I felt the need to prove that I was still down. And um, now, I, of course, I'm healed in that area and will not do that. But it stemmed toward those early messages I received about money. Do you have a savings account? Have you been researching about cryptocurrency? Do you understand how to make the most of your earned income as a single woman? If you're married, do you understand how to make the most of your earned income as a married woman? And here is a very small tip. It is not paying 50% or more of the household bills. And I'll just leave that at, at that. There are many other wonderful things that your money can be going towards to produce a legacy wealth and excellence in your home. Your personal investments in this part of your level up may include books, online programs, hiring someone to help you create a budget, create a financial plan, prepare a will, purchase life insurance. Oh my God. I it makes me cringe when I see people posting GoFundMes for people's funerals. And I'll share a personal story about that because my father recently passed away and he did not have any life insurance. And sadly, I did have to carry the brunt of the financial responsibility regarding that. But this is my personal feelings. If you are the person and a person that you do not have any personal life insurance when you pass away, you do not get a say so on what happens for your final your final um, rights because I am not going to go into debt for any fan, family member who wants a lavish funeral and they have not done it while they were alive the work that they needed to do to make sure that they were afforded a lavish funeral. I may be wrong. Some of you all may be mad at me for saying that, but I am very serious. 
you're not getting the gold rimmed casket and you did not have life insurance. So make sure that you have a will, you purchase life insurance for everybody in your family. Open mutual funds and also purchase real estate. You will hear me say this time and time again. Real estate is a key component to building generational wealth. It just is. So um, I know that's one thing that I'm doing. I've been every day listening to Rod, um, Rob Khalif and his podcast about real estate investing. And that's one of the ventures that I'm going to take to the next level next year. And I may um, even bring his wife on and do a, a talk with her about that. But because I have an online rapport with her. But anyways, making sure that you have real estate on your list to build the generational wealth that you need, your family needs, and learning how to map that out with your future husband or your husband if you're currently married. The next aspect of your level up is social. Your social level up will be about building your tribe, creating a network of like-minded people to support you, love you, give their wisdom, support, and to also give constructive criticism when needed for your personal growth. You cannot have friends that tell you you're pretty and perfect all the time if you truly want to level up. Your social level up may also include letting go of toxic or stagnant relationships, getting rid of people who are no longer on the same path as you, trying to sabotage you, or negative towards your new zeal towards changing your life and living a feminine lifestyle. I have heard so many stories from so many different women lately of friends who are just becoming haters because these women have decided to level up their lives. They're dressing nice, nicer. They are putting more time and attention in their looks and who they associate with. And the people that they used to hang with are just trying to pull them down. So, you know, you may have to cut those people off. You may just have to cut, cut off people who just aren't reciprocating the same energy as you because relationships are two way street. And nothing feels worse than trying to have a relationship with someone who is not reciprocating. I don't care if they're male or female. One of the things that you may have to do regarding your social level up is to invest money in etiquette courses to refine your manners and learn social graces. I mean, if you grew up eating off of paper plates and forks all the time, And now all of a sudden you are gung-ho about leveling up and you want to start going to country clubs. Well, my goodness, learn how to, you know, learn a formal table setting, learn how to use all the utensils at a uh, formal dining, dining situation or learn what a high tea is and how to navigate that before just jumping right in and going to a country club, um, I think that that would be a great investment. You may need to relocate to parts of towns, uh, parts, different parts of towns that have the types of people that you want to mix and mingle with, even other cities, um, or even be like myself and move to a whole other country. Uh, again, you may need to socialize in more upscale places. And, you know, that comes with sometimes higher prices at those places. And so you're going to need to budget a little differently, need, maybe even take, in, take on or create an additional stream of income so that you can afford to go to different events, social events that are a bit more upscale. Join social clubs and networking clubs. And the best clubs are are the ones that usually aren't free or you have to have a sponsor to actually join. Invest in dating courses. 
this is a part of your social level up because I'm just going to assume that most of you ladies are wanting to date and date differently. And this is one thing that I see a lot of people um, getting a lot of heat uh, or giving a lot of heat towards, and that is dating experts. I think that there is nothing wrong with investing in in getting knowledge from people who have mastered the art of dating, who can give you tips and help tweak your style so that you are attracting and drawing in the types of men that you want to be surrounded by. I know that I have done it in the past and I am so thankful that I did because I've always been that kind of woman that was really shy around guys, especially if I liked a guy. If I liked a guy, oh my God, I would be so shy um, around him. And I had to learn how to bring out my sensual energy. I had to learn how to flirt again and um, or flirt in my style and you know find my style of flirting. And along the way, I invested in dating experts that helped me. Um, you might need to also hire someone to tweak your online d- dating profile. That's one of the things that, things that I do help women do um, because I find that a lot of women um, give too much information on their dating profiles or the wrong types of information. And then they don't understand why only a certain type of man is drawn to their dating profile. So there's nothing wrong with hiring someone for that. Invest in relationship courses, including marriage preparation courses. Now, marriage preparation courses are one thing that has has gotten a lot of flat, flat. And I think that that's because there have been some frauds out there that have left a very nasty taste in people's mouths. And I totally get that. But I think just like you wouldn't wing, let's say, going into surgery, (laughs) if you're a doctor, why would you neglect preparing yourself for something as important and significant as your marital relationship? It just doesn't make sense to me. Your interpersonal relationships are going to be the most important things in your life at the end of your lifetime. And so making sure that they're fulfilling and that you have a a strong foundation to me is essential. So making sure to seek out marriage preparation courses. And I will leave a list of my personal favorites in the description box. Your social level up may also include traveling. So making sure to budget international travel or travel to, you know, tr- trans uh, continental travel. Get your passport. Make connections internationally. Become culturally fluid. Socialize with people who don't look like you or share the same backgrounds as you. These, these are all the things that will help enhance your social skills, and your social level up. And also allow you to change your social circle, help you to gain confidence, and be a powerful feminine woman. I I guess the biggest thing that I'm trying to say here, I'm a little bit tongue-tied, so forgive me, is I want you to become more thoughtful about the activities that you attend. Be strategic. You have to ask yourself, is this activity going to take me someplace, put me in the room with people who can, um, that I can make connections with, that I want to be rubbing, uh, rubbing shoulders with? And, and even if it's not that they can do something for you, their energy, is it a place where you can just vibe off of their energy? That's very important too. For me, I love my bed. I tell people that all the time. I am a Taurus. I am a homebody. And one of the things that I love to do is to be in bed and watch my movies or or read a book. So for me to actually want to get out of my bed, get dressed up, look pretty, it really has to be someplace that I really want to be 
and feel like the energy and the people will uplift me. So, you know, that's that's what I mean when I'm just saying be more conscientious. Um, attend charity events, volunteer, even plan leveled up girls nights out. Um, that's one of the things, the circle of women that I, that I associate with, we're going to start doing is getting together and starting to do specific activities that are enriching for us in all of these six key areas. And I think it makes it fun when you go with a group of like-minded women. I know I personally cannot wait to do this. If you're married, then Go to a new event or activity with your husband that can help motivate the both of you all. You know, maybe, and I think this is good too, because sometimes what happens is that people start to grow apart when they're not growing together. And while everyone is going to grow at different rates, I think that it's important as a married couple that you have leveled up activities that you do together to enhance yourselves as individuals and find passions that you all both share in a, and, and find ways to incorporate, you know, these six key areas so that you all have something to look forward to. Maybe it's a conference or convention each year that you all go to. Maybe it's something, a monthly meeting or, or, or whatever it is. Maybe it's an activity like golfing that puts you in a room where the energy is high energy, positive energy, and with people that can help elevate your social status, you know, just make sure to make it a priority. Of course, disclaimers, when you are, you know, wanting to hire coaches or online gurus that you're following, make sure to do your due diligence. If they're calling themselves a coach, don't feel afraid to ask them, do they actually have a life coaching certification or some sort of training? What qualifies them to be an expert? And if they don't have a certification or training, then do they have testimonials? Do they have some sort of record or success rate or something like that to verify that they actually know what they are talking about. You can also interview them and see why they enjoy doing what they do and why do they consider themselves an expert. So the bottom line is this, ladies, if you truly want to change your life, you're going to have to do the hard work. You know, it's like they say, the dream is free, but the hustle is sold separately. And the level up is not going to be free. And you also shouldn't expect experts in their given field of expertise to give you their knowledge away for free because quite honestly, it's tacky and a little bit low class. I hate to say that, but it really is. I know it it, it also shows that you have a, a spirit of entitlement and perhaps victimhood mentality which are two things that I am very much against. And I know not all of you all feel this way, but this is something that definitely needs to be said. What I want to know right now is what has been the most challenging part of your level up and living a consciously feminine lifestyle? I want to hear you from you ladies. So please, please tell me in the comments. I am getting ready to close this video. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I want you all to take care Stay blissfully feminine, and I will talk to all of you in the next video. Ciao!